Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be reviewing a piece of software for you guys. Um, this is called Wondershare Photofire. Um, this is a company that reached out to us and they asked us to uh, review their um, software for you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and take a look through um, what this company offers and lots of the different features going on. So um, you can get it for Mac and you can get it for PC. Um, at the moment we've got um, obviously on Mac um, and this doesn't have the photo editor part um, version but if you get it on PC you can also as well as photo cutter, photo eraser, you can also get photo editor. Um, there will be lots of information down below in the description too. Do go ahead, click those links, go and check out what's going on um, on their website and of course if you like it go ahead and download the piece of software. So I'm going to take you a quick run through of how to use a piece of software and roughly what you can do with it. Um, I'm going to work through a piece of, like a photograph and then hopefully um, we can get a little bit of an idea of how it works and what you can do with it. So obviously when you open up the piece of software this is the window you're greeted with. So we're going to start off doing the photo cutter first. So what we do is we'll just select photo cutter and we'll open up the window. So um, obviously it's got some samples that we can go ahead and work on or you can go ahead and open your own images. So you just click on open. Okay, so this is the window you're greeted with when you um, open up the piece of software. Um, as you can see down here, you've got lots of different photos that you can go ahead and use. Uh, these will be in the same domain um, where you found your photo beforehand. So, um, but we're just going to ignore this bit and we're just going to use this um, little bit here and we're just going to drop down um, and just get up a big full screen image. And then down here as well, we can just hide this bar to the left, um, to the right, sorry. And we've also got all these little uh, drop down here. So we're going to start off with the crop, then we're going to get to cut out and then photo montage, and then we'll go on to the, um, the different part of the software. So first of all, you can go to crop, just a really basic kind of um, cropping tool. You can orientate it into portrait or landscape, uh, just a really simple crop like that. Um, you can change the size, so for example, if you want to do four by five, um, and then you, just, you can just obviously move your crop um, up and down. So let's say we like that, you select crop. Okay, so once you've cropped it, we're going to come down and we're going to talk about the cutout section down here. So, obviously, if you hover over it, it can tell you what, it, uh, what the cutout tool does. So, uh, basically, you can remove certain areas of, of the background and you can choose to keep certain areas. So, for example, I'm just going to show you guys which um, these two tools and obviously the erase painting is once you've painted an area, you can just use the erase tool and just rub out a little section. So, the paint areas to remove are basically self explanatory. Let's say, for example, we wanted to remove this white in the background, um, we can just kind of just, you know, paint the white that we want to remove. Then when you let go on the mouse, just let it do its thing, it'll load. It's kind of like a smart uh, background remover. Okay, so once it's removed the background, you can kind of hover over it and it'll show you the area that it's removed in uh, blue with a little paint line. Um, and then as you can see, it's kind of removed all the white areas. Um, it's done a pretty decent job around this area up here. Um, you can obviously go ahead and paint in some more areas you want to remove by um, using the tool and just painting up and down on these areas. So again, once you've done that, you can go ahead and just paint in some more areas. So if we didn't want this white down here, we'll just paint that white out. And it'll go ahead and it'll do the same thing again. And you can just basically work your way through and remove all the areas that you don't really want to keep on the image. So there we go, that's just gone ahead and it's removed that little section as well. As you can see, it's doing quite a good job of um, differentiating between the the steel on the bridge and the sky. Um, that's working out quite well simply because it's a really white background. So you can also, in all of these, you can change the brush size, quality and edge blur. So um, for example, if you wanted the brush size to be massive and choose a large selection, so it would have been probably better for the sky to do that, but it doesn't really matter because it was so white. Um, you can obviously choose quality faster, normal or better. Um, edge blur, that will um, presumably give you a little bit of a feather on the edge. So if you don't really like how it's going to work out uh, being a really sharp edge. Um, so for example, if you're doing it around the hair, you'd want to do an edge blur of slightly higher. But you can see now it's kind of blurred the edges a little bit. So it's a little bit of a softer kind of uh, removing from the edge. So a little bit of uh, has been removed from the hair. And so that goes ahead and you can go ahead and change the blur, edge blur after you've done the little edit with the paint tool. So we can go ahead and we can use the erase painting now. So for example, if I don't want this area, we can just go ahead and rub out this little section. So as you can see, that's now removed the sections that I had um, drawn out here, and it's um, kept the ones that have still got the little brush tool going on. Okay, so now you can go ahead and you can do the opposite, which is paint areas to keep. So we can go ahead and we can do the complete opposite now. So as opposed to painting in the areas you want to remove from the background, you just paint over the section that you want to completely keep. And then everything outside of this painted section will be removed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose to... Um, keep the uh, the foreground, so Sebastian here, but I'm going to keep him in the photo and I'm going to see if I can remove everything in the background. So basically just going to brush over his entire leg and foot. I'll probably speed up this process a little bit because it's a little bit slow. Um, but we'll brush over him and then hopefully he will be staying in the photo and the entire background will be removed. So again, this is a pretty smart tool. 
Um, it kind of works out the background from the foreground for you, and we've painted out, and it kind of, I guess, works on the colors and the contrast, so it'll probably work better on the pictures that are high contrast, so for example up here, the dark blue versus the white background. Um, similar to the Photoshop tools like the um, quick selection tools, um, but this kind of does it, the whole thing, in one movement. So it's working out pretty well. We're just going to go ahead and select all the area we want to keep and hopefully it'll remove it from the background. Okay, so now I'm not entirely sure how necessary it is to completely f um, shade in the entire um, foreground section that you want to keep, but I'm just going to go ahead and shade in pretty much everything just so we can see if we can get a, the best selection possible out of the image. Um, now after you've got your kind of green Hulk Shrek-like monster going on here, um, just simply let go of the brush tool and let it do its magic. Okay, so while this is going ahead and doing its thing, I will point out that um, it, the app is a little bit slow when it's doing that. Um, this, these, these are quite large edits it's going ahead and doing, but you can see here it's gone ahead and it's done it for us. So you can see it's done a pretty good job of selecting the foreground from the background, but there are little sections, um, obviously these bits and this bit down here, and in between the legs and the arms, that it hasn't done the best job at. And obviously as the edge blur is quite high, I'm going to bring that down a bit, see if we can make that a little bit better. Okay, so now I've taken down the um, edge blur. It has made it a little bit better. It's done a pretty damn good job at selecting the um, the edges of Sebastian, the, like the, our foreground character here. Um, as you can see, around the edges on the sides, obviously when I hover over, it's going to show the selection, but um, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Around the edges, it's done a pretty clean, crisp cut. Now, obviously, once you've gone ahead and you've done this large kind of edit, you can go ahead and you can do paint areas to remove, and you can just paint around all these little things in the background here that you really, really don't want to keep. Um, and you can come back to crop, and again, if we zoom out, we don't want all this stuff in the background, so we're just going to come in and crop out all this stuff we don't really want to keep. Um, so we'll do this, crop that. Okay, so I've had a little bit of trouble trying to remove it completely from the background, so what I've done, you can see here, I've just gone ahead and I've painted literally the entire background with the, um, with the remove brush, um, just to make sure I can remove it completely. Um, it's not the greatest technique uh, to remove the background. I would have liked it to kind of... Um, like use the two together, so paint areas to keep and paint areas to remove up here um, work with each other, so if I paint one area to keep and then just remove the background with the other tool then that would make my life slightly easier, but as you can see it's done a pretty good job of removing um, Sebastian from the background so this is the final um, picture here and then obviously you can go ahead and you can save it um, and you can go ahead and use this in whatever I actually want to do with it, so I'm not entirely sure what you'd want to do once you've cut out uh, an image like this, but um, there you go, that's the final piece and you can go and click and you can click save up here and you can save it to your desktop or wherever so you can come down onto photo montage and this is obviously the basic part of once you've cut out an image you can go ahead and you can put them on the moon or something just you know, a little bit of fun walking along on the moon um, and obviously once you make it that small um, it works quite well so you've got lots of little stock photos going on up here you can add in your own photos as well I presume by clicking the plus icon so you click save and you can just save it onto your um, desktop or wherever. I would suggest that this is not the um, most advanced editing tool um, out there, but you know, that's what you can do with a photo cutter part. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go talk about the um, photo eraser. Okay, so we've done ahead, we've shown you guys how to use the photo cutter tool, now we're going to go ahead and talk about the photo eraser. So come back and we're going to click on the photo eraser and we're going to open that section up. Okay, so this is the window you're going to be greeted with when you open up the photo eraser section. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and close this bottom window here and just zoom in so you guys can go ahead and see what's going on. So again we've got the forward and backwards the redo and undo buttons and our save buttons up here. We can zoom in down here and we've got the three little selections up here. So again crop, basically the same as the um, photo cutter tool. Uh, we're not going to do that. You can obviously select your um, orientation and everything. Um, then we've got the select and array. So this is like a similar to the cloning tool down here. Um, we're going to go ahead and use this uh, scalpel tool here and we're going to basically just select a large section like this, and it, you'll go ahead and see, you'll see what it's about to do. So um, it's basically going to clone another section and copy it over this section, just to kind of blend it into the background and try and erase like a certain bit of the image. Okay, so you can you can see what it's done here. It's taken little sections of around the image and it's just placed it over this section here, and it's done like a its best job at trying to hide whatever I was selecting. So we're going to um, remove that, and I'm going to try it over his head here. So let's see how well it does at removing his head. So we're going to try and erase that, and we can see um, if it does a pretty decent job at that or not. As you can see, it's done a pretty decent job around here. It's kind of removed it, but it has still got the top of the hat. Um, and obviously you can select this, you can just, as opposed to drawing around a square, you can just draw around the certain section you want. Select that, and then just click Erase, and we'll see what it does now. Okay, so now, as you can see, it's completely removed the guy's head. It's done a fairly decent job. I wouldn't say it's done the best job, but again, this is kind of like a beginner tool. 
Um, and if you want to just remove something from the background, this is it's doing a pretty decent job for um, what it what it is. So now we can use the brush with a little plus next to it, so you can change your brush size. So let's use a fairly large brush size. I'm just going to select an area, let's say this um, white bit of rock over here. We'll change that. So again, select a raise. Okay, and that's done exactly the same thing as well. Um, as you can see, it's copied little sections and it's placed over the top. So what we can do is we're going to try again. We're going to see if we can just erase his arm here, just paint over this and see if it copies a little bit of the water over his arm, see how well that works. So there we go, it's done a pretty decent job as you can see it's completely removed his arm, um, it has put a little bit of bush from like up here or where, wherever it's taken it from and it's put it down in the water down here which isn't the best but obviously you can go ahead and you can just paint over that again and click erase and it should remove that little bit of section by replacing it again with a little bit more water. So there we go, it's completely removed the bush now. Um, the only thing I would say is the sections that we've painted in up here and here and over here, it's choosing sections, so I presume this little bit you can see it's on the water, probably down here, and again this looks like it's on the water as well. So it doesn't seem to be selecting the best regions to um, apply over the area, but it is kind of doing a pretty decent job at removing things from the, um, the photo. So as you can see, if we do this, if we paint in a large section over here, let's say for example we slipped and went over our um, little character here, we can go ahead and we can use our minus tool. Um, and we can just erase that brush stroke we took. So um, again, it's not the best as in, I was hoping that it would um, just kind of, we could brush out little sections of that, but it seems to remove the entire brush stroke. So I guess if you were doing like large sections, like let's say dusting around, and you accidentally went over like that, there are all your different ones over here. You could just come up onto your minus and just remove all those brush strokes. So let's come down to the cloning tool now. So now this is gonna be um, presumably similar to our um, the, the tool you can use on Photoshop, the clone stamp tool. So our source point is going to be the point that it's going to go ahead and like duplicate. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it down over here on the rock. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our brush size. We're going to change this up a little bit more. Um, feather, I think we're going to put up the feather to about 45-50%. Um, and we're just going to keep a lined tick. So now what we're going to do, as, as you can see in my brush here, which can be basically copying an area to the left and we're going to be applying it over here on the right. So let's select another section over here, so let's put it over the, the, the little bit of greenery over here. Um, I'm just going to increase our brush size, which is quite large. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to paint over this section over here. So one thing I'm noticing, this is really quite lagging when I start to try and um, duplicate little sections when I'm using the cloning tool. Um, it's not the best, it is really um, struggling quite hard just to kind of keep up with what I'm telling it to do. Um, but as you can see it's doing it's doing a decent job of like um, cloning a certain section and pasting it over the image. And this bit has been cloned as well. Not the best when you zoom in, um, just to kind of analyse the entire image when you've done that. But um, it's done a pretty decent job um, at removing like the arms and the head and stuff. So from beforehand like it has done a pretty good job. Okay, so that was the photo eraser tool. I've gone ahead and I've shown you guys how to use the uh, the photo cutter and the photo eraser. So um, pretty useful tool, I reckon, if you're a beginner. Um, you can go ahead and do little fun stuff like bring cutting something out for the background, putting him on the moon, as I showed you in the first example using the photo cutter. And then if you want to try and clone little sections and hide, let's say for example you got like a traffic sign or something, you want to hide it, you can go ahead and use a select and raise, um, which is like the smart cloning tool. Or you can use like the cloning tool, which I showed you. Again, just copy a section and draw over where you want to um, clone. So uh, my final summary would be this is by no means a um, really good piece of software for like uh, really advanced photo editing. Um, again, if you do want some really advanced photo editing, you're going to be looking at things like Photoshop and, and other Adobe kind of software pieces. But um, those are really quite complicated. So if you are beginning, you want to really just delve in, just have a little bit of muck around, and have a little bit of fun. This is a, a tool that I would suggest you can guys can go ahead and have a play at. Um, the only trouble I've encountered, I would say, um, when I've uh, used this tool, and I'm just going to um, tell you guys that it was a little bit slow. I have had some lagging. It has been a little bit annoying. As you can see in the clone tool, when I uh, used that, it was jumping about a bit, and it was making it quite difficult to paint over it. So I did find those little bits quite difficult, but then again, that is probably more of my computer, my machine, than um, the actual app itself. So that's it for today's video, guys. Um, once again, thank you to Wondershare for um, letting us have a go with their piece of software. And I do recommend, guys, go ahead, check it out, have a little bit of play around, uh, at least download the trial version, and see if you like it. And if you do, go ahead and, of course, um, buy the full license. So thanks for watching, guys, and once again, thanks to Photoshare for sending this out. We'll see you guys in the next video. Live long and prosper.